Good morning, everybody. This is the Personal Playlist Podcast, fondly referred to as the P3 on Voice Ed Radio. I'm Noah Daniel. I am so excited to have Stacy Golden here on the Personal Playlist Podcast. Stacy is an educational consultant for kids media across all platforms. She's also the director of marketing for a series of businesses and a mindful movement meditation and yoga instructor. Stacy had once believed she would be a classroom teacher forever, the single career that would take her from her 20s to retirement. Little did she know that many different opportunities would come her way and being a lifelong learner, she embraced them all wholeheartedly and they've guided her gently towards her current journey. Welcome to the show, Stacy. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to have you. So you left the classroom and you started working for a company that in many ways was at the forefront of online learning. Tell us a little bit about what took you out of the classroom and some of the places you landed before you're in your current situation. Sure. It happened completely by chance. I was not looking for it. Uh, Like I had written my bio, I thought I was going to be a classroom teacher forever. Uh, right when we when I chose my path uh, to be a, a teacher, I thought I was going to be a classroom teacher. And that was just my career. Um, and then I went on mat leave. Uh, this was back in 1999. And I went on mat leave with my eldest daughter. And within a week of being off on mat leave, I had this request by a friend of a friend who was looking for a teacher who loved doing research, who loved doing writing, and who was interested in putting together a series of lesson plans for an online gaming platform that would teach kids between the ages of really like nine to 12, so grades four to eight, uh, all about substance use and abuse and healthy eating. And I felt, you know, I had heard about baby brain and thought, "Hmm, maybe this is the perfect way to circumvent baby brain is I'll stay sharp and researching and writing and in my fields and I'll still be home with my baby. And that started right before I gave birth and then lasted for another year and a half. Um, It was something that I quickly fell in love with for so many reasons and realized pretty much straight away that this was more my calling kind of teaching on mass was the way that I saw it instead of just teaching to one classroom I could really teach across all classes across global communities really so that was the the catalyst for the rest of my career and then what happened next So unfortunately, and like you had mentioned, that company that I worked for, and they're no longer around, but it was a small independent company. They had a little bit of funding to get this project off the ground. And we were way way ahead of our time, like beyond nothing else was really happening um, in the in the fields in terms of kids media. Uh, It was so fresh and so new. And um they ended up going under. I mean, it it was very sad. We just couldn't make it work. And uh, the the company ended up going under. And I felt, okay, well, I have some options. There was always going back to the classroom. And really, that wasn't an option for me. After having worked with such an incredibly talented team and doing something that I really felt very passionate about. Um, So I started looking around for educational consulting jobs and started freelancing in kids media. And then I did that for about another year um, and then ended up landing a role as the in-house educator for TVO Kids. And that was in 2002. And I was there until 2015. So 13 year um, stint at TVO Kids doing all of their in-house educational consulting for um, their TV shows, both the preschool and school age shows, as well as their website, and then also spanned across into their TVO parents section, which is no longer available there, but 
back in the day, it was uh, it was really great and really big, and also produced a whole series of segments called Homework Zone, and featured homework help with real live teachers using the smart board in studio, um, and we did that across uh, all math and science and language. Uh, curriculum strands for grade two to six and we did that for quite a few years as well that's so cool and you're working on so many things but I I know that for you that finding the yoga piece was like another essential part of this puzzle but really tapestry of the work that you do Tell us a little bit about that. (laughs) Yeah, it's so wild. I mean, uh, I I, I love the fact that 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 doors open and um, and I love going through them and seeing what's on the other side. And I really feel as though everything kind of comes to a person for a reason and it's there to embrace and to teach you something. And yoga had always been a part of my life uh, since about 1995 when I first discovered it. Um, And then I was introduced to a certain uh, kind of yoga, which I'd never heard of before, called yin yoga. And um, one of my friends had introduced me to it probably about a year before I had decided to to leave TVO. Um, And the end was coming kind of it was nearing and I went into this one yoga class and it was, I I don't even know how to describe it. Like I I just, I felt like I had come home. It was this feeling of just utter peace and knowing where I belonged. And it opened up my eyes to so many things. And I signed up right away to that yoga studio because they offered a lot of yin classes. And, um, then within a couple of years, I, I've now become one of their instructors there and decided to do my yin certification so that I could bring that kind of peace that I had found, hopefully bring it to others and and, dis- and help them discover that for themselves because it was so deeply meaningful to me. And funny enough, and as a little side story, um, a couple of weeks ago, I was sitting uh, in my class about to begin and I like to uh kind of arrive you know quote unquote in myself and in the room before i begin and i'd like to do that with my students and i looked out in the class and there were 10 people in there and they were my my usuals that come and they've been coming you know religiously for for quite some time and i have such deep admiration for these people and Um, and I had to tell them about how yin had become so meaningful to me in my life. And I had used some of the practices that I'd learned on the mat. I had just used it earlier in the day off the mat and wanted to share that with them. And I literally had tears in my eyes while I was talking and got very emotional because of this gratitude that I feel for this yoga practice. So now I'm at the point where things are starting to really blend with that, where I've been asked to lead uh, mindful movement and meditation um, with a grade six class who's transitioning into middle school. uh, And that is starting um, next week, actually. I'm doing four sessions with a group of grade sixers, and I am so excited like beyond I really feel as though this is just um so the right place and the right time for me to be doing this so yeah it's it's uh it makes me very happy it's pretty pretty awesome I think it's wonderful Stacy and you you talking about helping people discover things for themselves in many ways that's what the show is about through this you know, regulated format of bringing three songs, a nostalgic one, one that reflects your identity and one that lifts you up, picks you up, inspires or motivates you, people go on a journey. So tell me a little bit about preparing for the show. (laughs) Okay, Uh, well, (laughs) it was funny, because the identity one, I had no problem with, and I'll tell you when we get there why. And, and uh, so that was okay. Um, It was the other two that I, I really wanted to do justice to some of my favorite artists but also uh, yeah it was it was interesting uh, trying to come up with the nostalgia one and um but I I, I think I made the right choice for me in the end because it, it does encapsulate so many things about uh 
me back then, you know, <laughs> I think. <laughs> okay, well, let's let's go there. So you picked a nostalgic song from a band that was actually going through a lot of tumult when they recorded this particular song. Why does it tell a story about your past? So back, I think that that album came out in 79, something like that, something something crazy like that. Um, and at the time, um, my sisters and I, we shared a record player. And every month, my father would move the record player into one of our rooms. <laughs> <laughs> and it was my turn to have the record player. And he had just bought that album, because my dad is very into music. So he had just bought that album. And he had these huge headphones, like the real old cans that went over your ears. And I sat there and, and this song was the first one that I learned and I played it over and over and over again. So I could learn every word, every nuance of the song. And for me, it, it just kind of, it reminds me of tenacity and perseverance and the love of learning and the love of getting something right um, and working at it until you get it right. And also reminds me of my family and, and how music uh, was a big part of our lives and so a huge part of my life. Uh, so yeah, all those things. Well, it's amazing and it should play the way you feel it. So let's play it. <laughs> Fleetwood Mac Dreams. <laughs> can just see you this young you with those big headphones smiling away to this music <laughs> yeah yeah it, it was it was uh awesome times awesome memories for sure <laughs> it's amazing and that nostalgic song really should take you back but the song that I guess most people have real struggles with is how to encapsulate yourself in a song so when you were choosing your identity song what was it that was really drawing you to this particular piece Okay, so this song, it's so crazy how it, I became introduced to it. And it's the way that I became introduced to it first that really, that I knew it was meant to be uh, my muse. And it very quickly became my muse. Um, it was probably, I probably discovered it in about November of 2014, I ended up leaving TVO in June 2015. And this song was instrumental in my leaving, which is very interesting. Especially so because it's an instrumental <laughs> song. So that's wild. <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> so 
I, 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 at the time I was driving this 2000 Sienna that was, it was a great car. I mean, so reliable, but a hunk of garbage. And like by the end of it, like it was really run into the ground, but it had a tape player, like a cassette player. And I was listening to some old uh, Grateful Dead tapes. Uh, we had some old bootleg tapes and it was the only place we could still listen to them. So I was listening to an old Dead tape. And at the end of one of the dead sets, I realized there, it wasn't just dead air. It had actually been recorded over a Stevie Ray Vaughan live concert in Alpine Valley. Hmm. And this was Stevie Ray's last concert before he died. Wow. And it's so crazy. Like even talking about it brings me chills. It was actually the last it, song he played at the last show, which is even crazier. Okay, so it's the, and it's the only song that's left on this on this tape. Wow. Um, and at the beginning of the song, he says something like, "This song goes out to anybody who's suffering. For any reason, may they find some some peace soon." He says something like that. And when I started researching the song after I realized how deeply it affected me and the first time I listened to it I actually had tears in my eyes so it's it's so multi-leveled it, it has so many nuances in it like it is so complex uh, yet so simple and um and I love the fact that there are no words to it because given and I used to listen to it I'm not even kidding like three four times a day on my drive into work on my way home from work and every time I listened to it, I found something new. And then I discovered that there were so many different iterations of it online that I found. Um, and then I started researching about it and found that he had recorded his part alone in his hotel room mm -hmm. and then introduced it to the rest of the band. And then they all layered in their pieces to it. Uh, and that, to me, spoke as a theme as well in life. You know what I mean? And how like people come in and add things to you and they take things from you and together you create um, beauty and art. And it, it just, it's, to me, the themes of the song are humongous. Yeah, that's, that's so interesting. I, I got me thinking, like, I guess that the existential reality is that, you know, we begin alone. And if we begin alone on this journey, and we're open then other people can layer on and they can layer off without taking away that the mm. individuality. Interesting. I never thought about it I that love way. That. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well yeah. let's play it. Riviera Paradise, okay. Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs>
you have me thinking about this song in a totally new way. And it's interesting. I know that Stevie once said that this was him praying through the guitar and I, and all the layers that you added onto it. It's amazing. And in terms of your identity, what is it that speaks to you as a, as a person, not just the theoretical stuff that you were saying before, but what, what, what about Mm -hmm. the sensibilities of it really speak to you? Well, I think when you listen to it the whole way through, and it's a long song, right? Like it's basically almost 10 minutes long. When you listen to it the whole way through, um, there are times when it sounds so sad and then other times it sounds so calm and then other times it sounds complicated and misunderstood. And um, I love the fact that it has all these different emotions that run through it for me and, and in my in my perspective. And I think that just speaks to me as a person, you know, there are um, times and situations where I have very mixed feelings about it. And those mixed feelings are so wonderful to embrace. And and you don't have to choose one or the other. It doesn't have to be that way. You can feel those mixed feelings. You can feel that it's okay to be happy with this aspect of it, frustrated with this aspect of it, um, angry at this aspect of it, that it all just makes it one experience. You don't have to choose one side over the other. Uh, so, yeah. And, and I think the one thing I wanted to add about that also is on the recording that I have of the song that I listened to, um, wherever the bootlegger <laughs> was standing, <laughs> there were these two young guys standing right near them and I could hear their conversation on the tape and when Stevie started playing the song the one guy turned to his friend and said man can't believe he's playing this song I've waited my whole life to hear this song and it, it, I just thought that added such a great <laughs> part to the whole story <laughs> that's really cool there is something like to the taper experience too where you get to hear those voices and it, and in some ways it adulterates the music, but it also enhances that audience experience of the music and you get to kind of share in that. So it's neat that that's part of the bootleg that you're listening to. Yeah, totally. Okay, but sometimes we have all these mixed emotions and we need to channel them somewhere. And if we don't have yoga or another meditative practice, we need a pick-me-up song. So you chose <laughs> a song that like that that bit that beginning of the song is like one of the most famous spoken intros, probably in pop history, I'm going to guess. Um, I don't know, but let's yeah. say let's say that it is. I would agree with you for sure. Because I know you're really into music of all the songs in all the land. Why is this one the one that you chose? Okay, so first and foremost, I felt like I had to pay homage to my little purple man <laughs> because he is, after all, you know, the best. Um, I love his music. I've always loved his music. And so this song in particular, uh, when this movie came out, where the song is from, I was 11 or 12 years old. It was the first movie I was allowed to go see without my parents. And my friend Nicole and I went to this movie and I was shocked to say the least. Because there's so many parts in it that are a little shocking <laughs> for an 11 year old. Sure. <laughs> um, but this song, no matter when I hear it, and I've heard, I mean, a bazillion times, I've played it a bazillion times, but um, the what and uh, what is under there for me is all about like, who, who cares, you know, let it out, just do it, like, just go for it, just take the chance just feel it like really feel it don't think about it so much just do it and to me that's what the song says and when I think about inspiration um and what that means to me it's always meant like why are you thinking so much about it why it's is anyone gonna die in this situation no so (laughs) Go and do it. Life's not that serious. Before you know it, it's going to be freaking over. So if you're thinking you want to do it, go and do it and don't look back. That's totally the vibe that Bruno Mars had when he was fully adorned in Prince Wear and did the tribute right after he died, like at the Grammy Awards. So let's mm-hmm. introduce that opening song from the movie Purple Rain, your inspirational and motivational song. Let's go crazy.
Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to get through this thing called life. And if the elevator tries to bridge for hell, that's a mighty long time. But I'm in the feeling about your personal playlist right now (laughs) i love it i'm bopping (laughs) along to all the songs Uh, and i think it's so wild how like as i'm looking at them here in this perspective like it's the combination of all of the underlying messages in these songs that have brought me to what i do now you know the fact that i freelance from home i'm busy i work a lot i'm working on a few different kids shows right now and i love each and every one of them i get to work with really talented um writers and producers and creative teams and it's amazing and and i get to do it with my cat and my dog around me and be home for my family and I, I, I just feel like all of these things, you know, like taking the chances and letting things just be what they are and letting opportunities come and embracing them. Like, like these are the things that have allowed me to be where I am now and so thankful and so appreciative of, of all the pieces that have led me to where I am now. And I know there's more to come, which is really exciting, right? I don't know where I'll be in in three years and five years and 10 years. And even though I like to have a little bit of a plan in my back pocket, like I like to have my one to three year plan. I like to have my three to five year plan. I love the fact that these plans change all the time. <laughs> well, it's nice to be able to be kind of outside of uh, the confines of, of a school day and really make choices. But really, in everything that you do, your educational background has served you and you continue to educate and inspire people all the time. If you want to get in touch with Stacy, you can email her at stacygolden1 at gmail.com or find her on Instagram at webspinner24 or at still underscore me underscore yin underscore yoga. Stacy, thank you so much for coming out to the Personal Playlist podcast. Do you have anything you want to add before I play you out? Sorry, I just wanted to just say it's stacy.golden1 at gmail.com. Oh, I missed that. So thank you. I'll make sure I put that in the blog. And all I wanted to say, Noah, is thank you so much. And you are a huge inspiration to people all around you. Um, and I know you feel that and that helps to fuel you to do even more and even better things. And, you know, it's a, the community that we build around us that helps to keep us strong and happy and So I thank you so much for everything that you do and for having me on today. And thank you so much. Uh, It was a pleasure. I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you. You too. Thank you for joining us on the P3, the personal playlist podcast. I'm Noah Daniel. This is Voice Ed Radio. And I hope you have a fantastic day.